Okay, so I'm going to show you how to get up and running with RetroBat through portable device. So, for example, USB thumb drive, USB thumb stick, USB external device. So if you're not sure what RetroBat is, it's a front-end system and it's designed to run with Windows, whereas most front-end systems uh, demands that you have a dedicated hard drive space for it rather than running it in the background of, say, Windows. So check this guide out. Okay, so I'm going to get you up and running with RetroBat and I'm going to show you how to install this on portable device and I'm also going to get you up and running with your first games. So just follow what I'm doing in this guide and be sure to check out my other RetroBat setup guides. I've got many at this point in my RetroBat playlist. So what we're going to do is just download RetroBat which is currently at version 5.3. If I download this, this is going to take us over to itch.io. If we go to downloads now, and you've got an option here to offer the developers of RetroBat some money just for their efforts. At the end of the day, they're giving you a free front-end system, and it's a superb one. So uh, for me, I'm going to go to No Thanks, just take me to the downloads. Okie doke. So next page you're going to see is this. And like I was just saying, this is currently on version 5.3. If we just download this... And as we can see here on the main RetroBat website, it's also saying that we might require uh, dependencies like DirectX or Visual C++. So this is software just so we can see visual things, that type of thing. So what I'm going to do is just give you a heads up how to do this. So if we go to download dependencies, and this is going to bring you to a GitHub website. If we just scroll down, now under dependencies, we're looking at 32-bit and 64-bit, and we've also got DirectX. So if you're running a computer with a 32-bit processor, then download C++ 2010 and also download the 32-bit version for 2015, 17, and 19, and then go to download DirectX. Now, this day and age, most computers are running 64-bit processors. So if that's you, then just click on this one just here. And then we're going to go to download. And for me, I'm going to download this from Tech Power Up. So that's the server I'm downloading from. So it's done within a few seconds, really. And if I just go back and back again, we also need to get DirectX set up. So just click on that one. And remember, regardless if you're running Windows 32-bit processors or even 64-bit, you're still going to potentially require DirectX. So select language, download and keep the file and there you go so we've got all our downloadables right now so what i'm going to do is just go back to my desktop okay so we're back to the desktop and we got these three files which we downloaded so we got the installer for retrobat version 5.3 we've also got direct x set up and we got visual c runtimes all in one which is a really handy package to download so i've just plugged in my usb device and what I'm going to do is just drag all three of these files inside of here. So once you put them onto the root of your USB device, so remember root is the first window you see once you plug in your USB device, that's called the root. Uh, so once you drag these into the root of your USB device, what I'm going to do is just now delete these three from my desktop no longer need them as we've already got them on the portable device so the first thing we're going to need to do is let's extract the visual c plus plus all in one so i'm using winrar what you need to do is use an extraction tool so winsip 7zip or like i'm using winrar just right click on it winrar and extract here and this is going to generate lots of different files for visual runtime. Uh, the way to do this, first of all, is just click on this install underscore all dot bat. And instead of installing these all separately one at a time, by clicking on the dot bat, this is going to install every one of them one after another. So I recommend keeping this on the, your USB drive. If you want to plug it in anywhere else in the someone else's computer, then there could be a possibility they don't have this either. So it's always useful to have this. 
so just continue pressing yes on this and eventually we will get there okay so that's now ended and what i'm going to do is just delete this visual c runtimes zip file and next thing you're going to need to do is obsolete we downloaded direct x so again we're just going to left click on this one and install this now for me i've already got these files installed but i'm just gonna sh tell you right now uh don't check the installer bing bar uh you know most of these are stores they're already ready checked in most of us don't want this so just be sure to uncheck that if you don't want it we're going to go to next and just let this initialize it shouldn't take too long like i was saying a minute ago i've already got all this set up on my computer but i'm being so nice i'm going through it with you <laughs> right so next thing we need to do is actually install retrobat so we've downloaded the exe and that's our installation file just double left click on this one and that's going to open up a new window eventually once it initializes and loads up okay so our first option here is to select language now obviously for me i'm going to be selecting german no i'm going to be selecting english and i'm going to press ok uh next agree and this is where we're going to make this portable now be careful where you're going to install this it says destination folder by default it's going to go to my c drive and of course, I don't want this on my C drive. I want this one in my D drive, which we can see just here, which is my external drive I've got connected. This is what's going to make this portable. So just go to browse. And what I'm going to do is scroll down until I come to my D drive. Now, in my D drive, I want this put into Retrobat 1. Now, if you've got a brand new USB drive, then you're likely going to have none of these folders. This is just extra stuff I've got on my hard drive for now. So just select your external drive. If you don't have any folders, then just leave it as D and then go to OK. But for me, I'm going to just go to Folder, Retrobat 1 folder, and press OK. And this is now set to install into my external drive. So just go and press Install. And this is going to take a little while, so be prepared for a little wait. It's got a lot of stuff to install. We're talking a whole RetroArch installation, lots of different files. So just give this time, and especially if you've got a slower computer, this might take a little while. Okay, so once that's been installed and it says completing RetroBat setup, what we can see now in our USB drive is lots of different folders. And I'm going to show you how to use these in a minute. But before we go there, what I'm going to suggest is these visual runtime files you've downloaded. You've got loads of these. So I'm going to just say create a new folder in your USB drive. Go to new folder and you can type anything you want into this part. I'm going to just type as direct X. And just to clean up this USB drive, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just copy all of those files that we downloaded before installing Retrobat's USB stick, I'm going to copy all of these into that new folder I've just created. And we got this one here and also this one. So once you've done this, just drag all of those into your DirectX folder or whatever you want to call these. And there we go. So the rest of these contents just here is Retrobat itself. So what we're going to do next is we don't need to create a desktop shortcut for this because, of course, this is going to be a portable installation. And the whole point of this is to make it portable. So we don't really need a shortcut. So I'm going to go to finish. Now, everything is now placed into this USB drive, like I've said. And we can delete this installation file, which is the uh, win64 setup.exe. So just right click on it and delete this one. And that's it. So you're pretty much ready to go. So what you're going to need to do first is double left click on Retrobat.exe. And this is now going to load from the USB device. Now, if you are brand new to Retrobat, be sure to check out my sub tutorials because I've pretty much done everything ranging from Sinclair ZX81, uh, ZX Spectrum. Okay, so we're now inside Retrobat and this is your first time and this is what you're going to see. This is default settings. There's barely any games on it. If we go into ports, there is a knockoff of Minecraft. 
and also some sort of clone of Bomberman and some geeky maths game here. Uh, play that one if you will. So what I'm going to do first is suggest you configure your controller. So just pop in a controller. I'm using a PS3. And if you can't access main menu from pressing start, then you can do this by pressing enter on your keyboard and just use your cursor keys or D-pads to go down to controller settings. And what we're going to do is configure this properly. So you'll notice that in particular games you eventually play, buttons don't work. So what we're going to do is going to go to controller mapping. And we're going to map this properly. Because you're going to find in certain games, buttons aren't going to correspond correctly. So let's do this the right way. So yeah, make sure your controller is plugged in. And you should see one gamepad detected. It says to us to hold a button on your device to configure it. So I'm just going to press down on my X button. And here we go. So this bit's pretty self-explanatory. So south, I'm going to press X on my PS3 controller. East, I'm going to press circle. North, I'm going to press triangle. West is square. Obviously, star is star and select is select. D-pad up, down, left, right. And just continue this until you get to the bottom. And when you come to this bit, the analog up and left, just go careful on this bit and configure it correctly. And left trigger, right trigger, uh, left stick press. And that just means if you've got analog sticks like the PlayStation 3 controller does, just press down on it like it's a button. And also for right stick too. Now, if there's buttons on there you don't have on your controller or you're running out of buttons on your controller to bypass one of these options, keep your finger down, held down, and you're going to get a not defined come up. And that will just skip us past until eventually we get to the bottom. Hotkey is the key you press to exit games. So I'm going to press my PS button on my PS3 controller for this option. And that's it. So next thing I'm going to say is if you want to download extra themes which are free, we do this by going to updates and downloads, themes. And this is your list of free themes. Now, I've already got Artflix installed, and it's a great theme. I'm going to show you it in a minute. By default, Retrobat comes with what's called Carbon Theme, which is very similar to RetroPie, I believe. So let's go to Artflix. Now, on this part, you're going to see Install. So just press Install. For me, it's already installed, so I'm going to just update this. And once this is done, you're going to see at the top... Uh, downloading and then it will go to extracting and that'll be it so after installation it's extracting to use the theme we're going to go back to main menu and press and start user interface settings your first option is theme set and here you go this is my art flicks which I downloaded earlier before this tutorial so just press x on that or whatever button uses that and just back out of it and that will take us straight into our new theme so that's about it for now. So let me just get you up and running with some basic games. So some games in Retrobat, several actually, are going to require BIOS files. And I've got plenty of setup guides on that, ranging from Amiga to PlayStation 3 to Dreamcast to arcade systems such as Triforce and Naomi. So be sure to check those out. But for this, it's going to be a very basic setup. So... In your file structure, or rather in your folder structure of where you've just installed Portable Retrobat, you're going to come across ROMs folder, and this is where our games are going to go. So from this folder, we can literally see every system that Retrobat supports, and there is a hell of a lot in here. So my first game I got is Adam's Family, and that's uh, titled Adam's Family, and this is a .SMS, uh, that's .Sega Master System. Uh, so what I'm going to do is drag this into my Master System folder. And I've also got a NES game. So I'm going to just scroll down until I get to NES. And this one's in a .zip format, and that runs just fine. So let me just very briefly show you what file extensions Retrobat supports. This is BatGUI. If we open this up by double left clicking... This is going to open up Batch UI, and this is a very, very useful bit of software here. So what I was saying about uh, establishing which file extensions each system entertains, we're going to go to System List and System. And if you just scroll down to pick a system that you're not sure which file extensions it supports, I'm going to go to Master System, for example. 
Now, if we go to extensions just here, it will tell you which file extensions Master System uses in Retrobat. So as you know, I've got a .sms, and this is also a .sms, which means it's going to support this. And we've also got cores for the Master System just here listed. So anyways, let's go back into Retrobat and close these down. So as we can see, inside Retrobat, we now have got Nintendo and we got Master System. So I'm going to show you how to get artwork in preview videos for these two systems. And this is going to be the same way for every other game system you add for. So I'm going to scrape both of these. And what I'm going to do is go to Main Menu and scroll down to Scraper. Now, with Screen Scraper, you're going to need to register and sign up with them. It's a free sign up and it's absolutely free. So very good way to get your artwork in preview videos. So to do this, once you've got your login details, just go into Scraper settings. And at the bottom here, username and password, just pop in your username and password that you signed up with with the website. And you're pretty much good to go. So let me just recommend you put image source to box 3D, box source to 2D, and will under logo source is my preferred option. So once you do this, just scrape now. And once that's finished scraping, you're gonna get a little window up here at the top, scrape and finish, update game list to apply changes. So to do this, go back to main menu, game settings, update game list, and press yes. So let's check these games out. We got Sega Master System, And there we go, preview video. And we're also going to go to Nintendo NES. And there we go, preview video. Now, we can actually get the box art for this. And this is just a case of going back with theme settings. So go to user interface settings. And under theme configuration, I've currently got my game list view style as HCoin Spin. So, for example, if I go into tiles, detailed logo, back out of this, go back into Nintendo NES. As you can see, we got box art now, as well as a preview video. So to do this, we're going to go to main menu, user interface settings, theme configuration, and game list view style. And like I say, just a simple case of just selecting one of these in back and out. And there we go, a different style again. So let's open up one of these games. Let's go to Master System and open this up. And as we can see, we've got the classic Mark I Master System as the decorations on the sides rather than black lines. So there we go. And remember to press your hotkey, which you put into your controller configuration to exit games. And again, for Nintendo NES, just open this one up. And we should have decorations on the sides, and we do. So just exit out with your hockey again. So that's it for my Retrobat portable guide. I could go on and on with this guide. There's so much to Retrobat. But like I said, I just recommend you check out my additional setup tutorials. Like I said, I've done so many at this point and I've got so much more to do for Retrobat. Also Batacera, which is kind of a bit like Retrobat. Uh, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And if you like this video, please subscribe and be sure to hit notifications so you can get my videos as I upload them, which is generally once a day. But until next time, stay retro.